Now we're going to switch gears and look at heterotopic ossification. This radiograph of a 65-year-old male who uh, reports restricted range of motion uh, and pain when sitting 18 months after a right hip revision. Uh, what is the most appropriate management at this time? That includes uh, physiotherapy, use of alendronate, endomethacin, radiation therapy, or excision of the lesion. And in the setting of a mature heterotopic lesion, uh, 18 months following surgery, the most appropriate uh, treatment uh, is excision of the heterotopic bone if there's restricted motion and pain with sitting in this particular case. Now, if we look at heterotopic ossification, it usually occurs spontaneously, uh, and it can occur certainly for following hip replacement or neurologic injury, and it is common after hip replacement, less so after knee replacement. It tends to be more common in men with a 2 to 1 ratio. Uh, in the setting of traumatic brain injury, hip is the most common location, followed by elbow, shoulder, and knee. In spinal cord injury, again, hip is the most common, followed by the knee and el the elbow. Uh, the hip flexors and the abductors can be more commonly involved uh, compared to the extensor mechanism or uh, adductors. Now, the pathophysiology of heterotopic ossification is not exactly known. There appears to be a genetic predisposition, and certainly it is associated with tissue trauma. Now, things it can also cause, certainly if you have severe limitation of motion due to HO, you can have pathologic fractures. They can cause nerve impingement, soft tissue contractures, formation of decubitus ulcers, joint ankylosis, and Heterotopic ossification after a total hip can certainly affect the outcome of hip replacement. Now, this is sort of a busy slide showing various risk factors. I think the take-home message here is certainly this is most common in the setting of decubitus ulcers. Uh, spinal cord injury or traumatic brain injury can also be a cause of heterotopic ossification. It can occur with uh, I am nailing of the femur, particularly if you're using a piriform, a starting site, and occasionally can be associated with traction pins in the distal femur. Again, risk factors, certainly a total hip replacement. Uh, if it's associated with a psoas tenotomy or cementless implants due probably to particulate debris and or damage to the soft tissue from the brooches. And it tends to be more common in a anterior or transtrochanteric approach, least common in a posterior approach. With regard to knee replacement, notching of the femur can predispose you to heterotopic ossification, as can vigorous uh, elevation of the anterior femoral periosteum, just proximal to where your anterior cut is. So to summarize, in the setting of total hip replacement, risk factors for heterotopic ossification include prolonged surgical time, uh, excessive soft tissue handling and or damage to the soft tissue during broaching of the uh, femur, uh, patients with hypertrophic arthritis such as ankylosing spondylitis or with DISH syndrome, and certainly males are more commonly affected than females. Often it presents as painless loss of motion or can be associated with pain, particularly if there's impingement of the soft tissue. Uh, often early on, this can appear to be a, a cellulitis or septic joint with a warm, painful, swollen joint prior to the lesion appearing radiographically. Uh, with total knee replacement, you can develop uh, quadricep uh, mechanical symptoms such as snapping or patellar instability. Uh, imaging standard AP pelvis lateral views, but Judea views can also be useful to look for the lesion and get an idea where it is. Um, it, as far as maturity of the heterotopic lesion, if you start to see evidence of a bony uh, cortex, that suggests a more mature lesion. Uh, early on, uh, x-rays are not terribly useful prior to calcification. Uh, and it usually takes about 7 to 10 days for uh, calcific deposits to occur after the onset of symptoms. 
Ultrasound occasionally can be useful. I personally not use this uh, for the diagnosis of, of HO, but can uh, reveal the developing lesion prior to it becoming obvious on radiograph. Certainly a CT scan can be useful if you're considering excision to help you identify the location and structures you should avoid during the excision of this calcific lesion. Uh, bone scan can help particularly uh, early on as well as determining the matru maturity of the lesion. Uh, it can show quiescence once the lesion is settled down. From a laboratory standpoint, uh, when this is actively occurring, uh, you'll see an elevation of the ser serum alkaline phosphatase. You can see an elevation of the C-reactive protein. And this tends to normalize as the lesion matures. If you have an elevated ESR uh, greater than 12 weeks after a hip replacement, that can be a predictor of heterotopic ossification, but clearly you need to rule out infection as a source of that elevated uh, ESR. If you look at these pathologically or hist histologically, you'll see mature fatty bone marrow and a mature trabecular bone uh, pattern. Prophylaxis, there's a variety of things that can be used. Probably the most common is endom <coughs> excuse me, endomethacin, 75 milligrams a day, ranging anywhere from 10 days to 6 weeks. Uh, perioperative radiation can be quite useful uh, with 700 me megarads uh, either given four hours prior to surgery or within 72 hours of surgery. Lower doses have not been as effective and certainly in the uh, patient who is predisposed to this either with prior heterotopic ossification or uh, a very hypertrophic type of arthritic pattern. This can be useful to minimize the risk of HO. And there's a study uh, cited on your slide by uh, Tim Board uh, looking at the 700 to 800 range, uh, less than four hours or within 72 hours. And it can be as effective uh, as endomethacin. So the treatment, certainly as the indication for surgical treatment is severe loss of motion. Uh, once heterotopic uh, ossification is visible on radiograph, uh, various chemical uh, prophylaxis will not work, nor will radiation treatment. So surgical excision is the treatment of choice once the lesion matures. And typically, that requires you waiting at least six months after the initial procedure to make sure that the uh, process has settled down. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.